Hi, this is Aaron with Dynamic Perception. I'm going to give you a tutorial here that shows you just how quick and easy it is to make great time lapses with the Dynamic Perception Stage Zero Dolly and the MX2 controller. I've got everything I need here to get rolling. So here, I'm going to set it up. All right, so we have the six foot rail with the cart in place with the belt already on there. Uh, we have a motor and we have a tripod head. Dynamic Perception doesn't sell tripod heads, but just about any photographic head works great. And now I have two tripods. I'm using the Enduro AKB2 tripod kit, which is the one we usually recommend to customers. It's strong and stable and pretty lightweight and a real bargain too. The easiest way to connect your tripod or tripods to the rail are with quick release plates. To do that, you take the T-nuts that we include with the kit and you thread it onto the quick release plate bolt. And then you take the plate with the nut on it and you slide it onto the bottom center slot of the rail. Slide it wherever you need it and tighten it down and you're good to go. The tripod can now be mounted and dismounted easily via the quick release plate. I'm going to do that on the other tripod here. So now what I have in here are the rest of the components, which are a camera. In this case, it's a Canon 7D. And now I'm going to mount that on the tripod head. And I have the MX2 Dolly engine. And I have Velcro fasteners set up on this cart, which are really going to help you. I highly recommend that. And then I have a battery as well. Now, any 12 volt battery will work, but this is the one we sell through our website. And it's, uh, it's really small and lightweight, and it's good for about 10 hours of power. So it's a good one. So it's pretty simple from here. I'm going to plug the cable from the battery into the slot that says 12 volts. And then I am going to take the cable from the motor and plug that in at motor one. We're only going to work with motor one because we're only using one motor for this. Um, there's other applications where you could use two motors. You could have a pan and tilt head so you can get more axes of movement. The default mode for the MX2 is continuous mode. So when you start it, it's going to continue to move and then you can take shots down the line. The other mode is shoot, move, shoot. And I'm going to show you that in the next video. For now, we'll work with continuous. And in fact, for the first shot, I'm going to just record video. I'm not even going to do a time lapse. So it's really easy to get things started. So on the battery, I'm just going to turn on the switch. The MX2 comes on. The main screen's quite simple. Now we have the on-off indicator here, the interval indicator here. We have the direction for motor one and the speed for motor one, the direction for motor two and the speed for motor two, and the shot counter. Now, to move through the different fields, we'll use the left and right buttons. And to toggle the values, you can use the up and the down buttons. So at this point, it's just a matter of setting your shutter speed and your exposure and your ISO to get a good shot. So to get things going on this, I'm not going to worry about the interval because I'm not taking time-lapse shots. I'm just going to record video. So all that matters is the speed. So for this first continuous move, what we're going to do is we're going to toggle over, let's get the direction that we want, left or right, for the movement we desire. And then we're going to, I'm going to put that up to the max speed, which is just over 30 inches per minute. Okay, so on the camera here, I'm going to put it into video mode. And I'm going to start recording video. Every camera that can shoot video handles it differently, so read the documentation for your particular camera. Then I'm going to toggle over to on. Now it's going to move to the end while it records video. And now it's not a terribly fast move, but in fact when you take it and you speed it up in post, you can get some really great effects. Here's some other examples of that. Now the motor does make some noise, and it could be loud for some video situations. Okay, now that that's done, let's set up a simple time lapse. I'm going to set up the tripod so that the shot starts from low and goes up high, and so we see some of this cistern with the graffiti on it, a little of the tree, and then the sky so we can see the clouds going by. So this is just how easy it is to set that up. Now you want to find a good center of balance. So you might want to take a little time to get it just right. 
now there's lots of ways I can preview my shot. In this case, I'm just gonna take it off the, off the tripod head and I'm just gonna get a look for how I like this. So basically, if I have it about like that, maybe I want it tilted up a little bit. Because like I said, the clouds are kind of interesting. Okay, that looks about right to me. Now at this point, it's really important to set your camera to manual mode and manual focus. If you don't do this, you'll get some undesirable effects as the camera adjusts the exposure and focus during the time lapse. Now what I need to do is attach the shutter cable and put that in where it says camera, and then you plug that into your camera. When you order your kit, you can choose the right shutter cable for your camera. So then, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the MX2 to shoot a time lapse. Now I'm gonna keep it in continuous mode. And now a good standard time lapse interval is five seconds. So let's just work with that one here. And now I have to set the speed of movement as well. Now we wanna go a lot slower this time because it's gonna be a time lapse. And what I'm gonna show you is the tooth method. So I'm gonna start out by putting this at about two inches per minute. And we'll test that out. So I'm gonna press on and the motor starts moving. Now it's going really slowly. Now I wanna make sure that I'm getting one tooth of movement across the belt per shot. That'll allow us to get the right speed for our motor movement. And it's definitely not there yet. So I'm gonna speed it up. The MX2 is live, so any changes you make while it's running will take effect right away. And I'm gonna pay attention to when the shutter goes off. Okay, it went off and it was at about the middle of one of those teeth. Went off again and I probably only went about half a tooth. So I'm gonna speed it up some more. You can hear it speeding up. Okay, now it's really moving. Shot. And a shot. And there we go. So now I have it going at one tooth per shot with an interval of five seconds. And the speed is just completely dependent upon how fast you need it to go to get to that one tooth. Now using the tooth method is a great way to make the calculations really easy. So on a six foot dolly, you're essentially working with 300 teeth. So it's going one shot per tooth. So there's gonna be 300 shots. So if you multiply 300 times five seconds between the shots, that's gonna give you 1500 seconds. If you divide that by 60 to figure out the minutes, it's gonna take 25 minutes. So now you know you have 25 minutes to go scout out the next location for a time lapse. The calculations can go the other way too. So say for example, you wanna shoot a time lapse that'll last for three hours. So you take three hours, multiply that by 60 to calculate the minutes. That's 180 minutes. Multiply that again by 60 to get the seconds, which equals 10,800. Divide that by 300 for the 300 teeth and you get 36. So you would set your interval to 36 seconds. That would give you 300 shots spread out over three hours. So 300 shots, if you bring that in at 30 frames per second, you're gonna have 10 seconds of footage. If you bring it in at 24 frames per second, it's about 12 and a half. You can use whatever frame rate you want, and I'll cover that in a later tutorial. But for now, let's just wait and see what we can get out of this time lapse. So that's it. That's how easy and fast it is to make a time lapse with our system. In future tutorials, I'm gonna show you some more advanced features like move, shoot, move mode, and also some computer processing techniques so that you can take your files and make great movies out of them. That's it for now. Check back for more soon at dynamicperception.com.